Hi there, everybody. So I wanted to go quickly over your fall semester syllabus, just so that you get an idea of what to expect. Um, so hopefully you've gotten a little bit of time to kind of go through the course, and this is going to help you um, kind of do that last bit to understand how things are going. So my name is Dr. B. Um, it is Heather Brazier. Um, I do have um, meeting times and office times on WebEx. If you ever want to sit down and have a chat with me, I'm always available for the most part. I do teach face-to-face -face classes, so and I have meetings. But outside of that, I can help you if you need it. You can find me at heather.brazier at, at Sanjack College District. Dot, it should be edu. I have the wrong. Um, I have the wrong email there, I'm sorry, I will update that. Um, you can also text me at 262-346-3880. Please don't call that phone number, it is a Google number. Um, I am a part-time adjunct faculty, so I have a full-time job. Um, there's a handful of people who teach full-time at the institution, and then a lot of us are part-time people. With that being said, um, I do work um, during the day, and I do try to um, follow up during the day, but sometimes it's gonna be the evenings or early in the morning when I get to emails. It just depends on how the, the day's playing out. Just like you, um, with your job and your children and anything else, friends, family, right? You have all these other um, things that you have to deal with. So when you know you have t certain time kind of set out for um, your, your schoolwork. So I do too. Now, with that being said, if it's an emergency, something that really you need help with immediately, that's why I give that work phone number for you to text. Because if I'm in the middle of something, then I know you need that extra help. You can text it and tell me what's going on and what you need. And then I definitely will be there to, to help and at least text you back and tell you, this is a time that I can get to it. And if you need anything and before that, you know, I can at least help you or at least calm you down from anxiety attack if that's the case so keep that in mind so um, we are um, this is biology 24 it is um, an introduction to anatomy and physiology so this includes both lab and lecture and this is going to go over the entire body so it's a lot of content so just be aware of that and if you do a little bit every day you'll be fine um, it is um, integrated and specialized so we try to make it um, for human anatomy there's not really any comparative anatomy here and it's designed for non-nursing allied health programs or health information medical imaging respiratory care surgical tech those kind of st students so if you're de wanting to get a nursing degree this is not the right class you will need to take um, 2301 um, 2101 and 2302 2102 those are anatomy and physiology one and two they used to be 24 one and 24 two and so the course materials you can find in your course. Um, it, we are using McGraw-Hill on here and during the course walkthrough, I will give you that information a little bit. Now the student learner outcomes, this is all the um, basic content that you will learn throughout the course of the semester. These are determined by the state of Texas, not by me, but in order for us to keep the accreditation at San Jacinto College, we do have to make sure that we cover these because they do audit classes um, whenever they go for accreditation. Now, what does accreditation do for you? It means that this class will be accepted at another state institution for Texas if you go. So if it's accredited, um, you wouldn't have any problem with this transferring. Now, if it's a, public, a private institution that's different or outside the state of Texas, but if, say, you are deciding that you want to go to um, – say UTMB to work on a nursing program or you know um, Texas Women's or something like that Texas Women's a little different because it's private but you know what I mean you'll have that opportunity and um, this class will count and these are the things for labs now with me I will tell you um, my grading system isn't based on percent average on here it is based on points and I find this easier to do than I'm um, having you do a bunch of calculation so throughout the semester what you can do is you can just go and you can go in there and um, add up how many points you have and at any time you're you can go by the number of points that you should have like if you made 100 on anything you take 
the number of points you have divided by the number of points that you should have if you made hundreds on everything times 100 and that will give you the percentage that you're at. Now why I do point wise as you go through the semester, especially if you get to the end of the semester and you have to take the final exam, you can look at that and you can go, oh, okay, how many points do I need to make an A? Because on here, you need 900 points to make an A. 800 to 899.99 for B, 7 to 799.9, C and all that. Now, I generally do not curve. I don't have to. I've been teaching for quite some time. Um, as a full-time professor, I've been teaching for about 11 or 12 years. And before that, I taught at University of Houston in the graduate program. And I also taught adjunct before that. And um, why I worked full-time in both um, industry for a time. And um, I worked at UTMB in research there for a while too. Worked um, in one of the allergy units there. So um, I've been teaching for a long time and kind of get an idea of how things work. Um, some of this is um, developed by San Jacinto College so um, that for their standardization, but you shouldn't have any problem. Plus, on top of that, I give extra credit throughout the semester, so keep in mind when that comes up. The beginning of this is all extra credit, so that kind of helps like buffer you a little bit at the beginning. So as you lose points, if you like... Um, missed a few items or anything you don't have to worry as much if you do all this stuff because you're like I have these extra credit points now if you stop attending you will get an fx and this is for excessive absences so there is a difference between failing a course because you just didn't grasp the concepts in the course and failing it because you stopped showing up so keep that in mind as you go through so if you want to know grading formula, this is going to give you an idea here. So you actually have what are called the Learn Smart reading modules. There are 18 modules here. And what those are for is um, as long as you do them, you get credit for them, right? And so um, those work really, really well with the homework. Um, the homework is a little bit different that you can actually lose some points for but you don't lose them all at once right like if you make a mistake you answer wrong it'll take a little smidget off of that that score and then they'll give you another chance to try to do it and so when we look at this um, every single one of your Learn Smart reading modules, the 18 assignments that you have, those are worth five points apiece. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but 90 points is almost the difference between an A and a B, right? So keep that in mind. So as you go through this, if you do that, those are just free points. And it's going to help you because it's going to review the whole chapter and allow you just to have questions. And if you get it wrong, it's no big deal. It's just gonna put it back into the question pool and then ask you again later until you get it right. And that's once you get everything right and all the concepts, that's when you're done. Now the homework, there are 18 homework assignments there. And what that is, is those are worth 10 points a piece. It's a little bit more because it's not just a, you do it and you complete it kind of thing, right? You have to think about it. So it's gonna be a little bit more um, in depth there. Now you do have lab activities, there's 20 of them, it's 10 points each. And just to let you know for all of these assignments, the Learn Smart reading assignments, those you just do, it's no big deal. But the homework and the lab activities, you can continue to do those. Like if you get, say, a 60 on your homework and you're like, I really don't like that, you can go in and do it again. You can keep doing them until you get the grade that you want. That includes the lab activities too. Now the lab activities, there are 20 of those and there are 10 points each for those. Now what's really cool about this class and what I've designed is there are no lab tests here. So um, for those, there's like the individual quizzes that goes with all of the different labs, but there's not like lab practicals, which you'll see that in say a class like um, anatomy and physiology one where you have several different labs and then you have to study for all of those to take a, a lab test. You don't have that here. You're just going to have these um, these Learn Smart labs that you go through that you do, and along with the um, the activities for them as well, which are like quizzes that kind of help you. Now, the actual labs themselves, if you complete it, you get you should get full credit as long as you do them right, and they're um, interactive, involved, so you should have a fun time with that. 
Um, now, instead of having actual exams, you're just going to have quizzes. So at the end of each of these Learn Smart reading modules and homework, you will have a quiz. And those quizzes um, will test you over each section. And then basically at the end of the semester, you will have a cumulative final over just your lecture information, right? And you can use all those lecture quizzes as a way to study for those, just to let you know. So when it comes to a lot of these, it's a lot harder, but for homework, that is the only thing that you can actually turn in late. Everything else needs to be turned on on time. You also have this one group project, which is gonna be like a case study. It's gonna be applicable to what, something that you may do if you go into a certain field of um, anatomy or into um, the medical field, right? So it's gonna be something that's applicable and you're gonna be able to do it with a group and it's gonna be, I think, something that you'll enjoy and have fun with it. Now group activities, I know people hate this, but there's nothing I can do. You have to have one of these. And why do you have? Because the state of Texas says that you have one of its student learner outcomes is being able to work in a group. And I can tell you, you know, I work as a professor and I am constantly required to be able to work in a group. Even with people I don't like or I don't work, that I don't think I work very well or they can be difficult to work with, right? So when you think about this, this is just getting you ready for more of those kind of things. And you may say, well, I already work or do this or do that, but sometimes those um, kind of um, activities that you do at those jobs are gonna be a lot different than what you do when you get out of college. So this is kind of teaching you how to work in a group with this type of content, right? Like, um, because I can tell you, um, I worked as an apartment assistant manager for a while and we had to work as a group. And that activity that I had there is a lot different than coming here and working at a college and dealing with content and stuff and students and trying to work with other instructors to, to get that so um, that kind of gives you an idea and it's worth all this is worth a thousand points so that's where this comes into the number of points that you need so you can track and say if you lose more than 100 points you're not going to make an A right so as you go through you can actually take a sheet of paper and every single time you get done with an assignment write down how many points you lost and that's a really easy way to get an idea of where you stand in the class at any moment So this is kind of telling you that you can um, turn in the homework, but it's not accepted late after the last day of class, right? There's some of that, but um, this is the only assignment that you can turn in late and you can get between 20 to 25% off. So how I would do these assignments is um, actually, I would do the reading assignment first, I do the homework second, and I do the lecture quiz. That's the sequence that I would do for um, the lecture information. And then the lab activity, you can do either before you do the, the lecture or after. Um, you could even do, if you liked, you could do the Learn Smart Reading module, the lab homework, the lab activity, the homework, then the quiz. So that's kind of giving you an idea of how I would do it. Um, exams and lab practicals, if you have them, we don't have lab practicals, you just have those quizzes. Um, they are generally done once, and unless there's an emergency, there's no retake, and you'll have like a week to complete them. And the final exam, the same way, it won't be just last minute, you get like two hours to do it as if you were in a face-to-face, -face. You'll, you'll have time. And you should be logging into this class at least twice a week. That will help you to um, get stuff done as if you were in a regular class. So keep in mind with this, it's four credit hours. So um, people tell me all the time, well, I've taken history, I've taken English. This is so much work. And you know, that was a three credit hour course and this is only four. Well, that's the problem is three or lecture hours. And then one credit hour goes for lab, but the lab you're required to be in class for three hours. So, um, Basically, in um, classes like psychology and history and English, like the number of credits you get are equal to the number of hours you're in class. But in science classes, that one hour for lab is actually equal to three hours in class. So I have to assign enough material to cover that. And so um, there should be 96 hours of contact hour in this class at least, right? That's what you would be doing if you're in a face-to-face -face just sitting, hanging out with me. That doesn't include prepping for the class before you come in, reading, studying, all of that. 
So keep that in mind because sometimes we forget that because we don't have that travel time. We don't have that differentiation between I am at home, I am at school, I'm at work, you know, it makes it, it makes everything flow and not um, be as defined. So I just want you to, to understand that. And you know what? It's something I do myself, like when I was at, at home and I'm working for home or am I doing, if I don't go somewhere, sometimes it all kind of mushes together and it, I kind of lose um, the reality of how many hours and what I should be doing. Um, classroom, especially when you work in the group projects or you contact me, be supportive to others and just be cordial. You don't have to like me, but you have to treat me with respect, which is what I'll do to you. I mean. All this is based on just, you know, being respectful to others, right? And I will always tell people in this that I will never say that I have more life experience than somebody because I can tell you at the age of 21, I had more life experience than people I knew in their 50s or 60s because it just depends on where you are in the world, you know, the people you encounter, your plight that you got dealt when you were born all that it matters right so I don't know your story you don't know mine um but with that being said you know I'm never going to act like you know just listen to me because you know I know better than you and just talking about that in terms of life itself um I always give like little tidbits just from my own experience to try to help people but I won't ever do that but what I can tell you is there is a really good chance that I have more educational experience and that's just because you know think about it I am old um I have gone through and gotten two bachelor's degrees and a PhD and I have worked in industry research for a, a medical school right and now I'm at a community college teaching and I've also taught at universities like HBU um, after I graduated and of course U of H when I was there. So why do I mention all that is just utilize me for questions that you have about your experience in college and I will do my best to help you and I'm always an advocate because I come from my people <laughs> We're not educated. My mom dropped out a week into ninth grade and my dad got his GED, right? So I do not come from a college educated family that raised me because I am adopted. Um, so I made a lot of mistakes going through life. And so that's why I also say I may have more educational experience because I messed up a lot because I didn't have anyone to talk to. And I had what was called imposter syndrome, which says um, that you don't belong because you don't have the experiences everybody else has. So keep that in mind. If you feel that way, you're first generation like me, um, reach out and ask me and get advice if you need it. And if I can't give you the right advice or find an answer, I will find someone who will. But I, that's just to tell, be really supportive of other people always, you know, and because um, you never know when you may need them or, you know, you, you never know when that may happen to you that someone is not supportive of you. Here are student support information. So for Generation Park Campus, you can call there. Um, just remember, as you probably already realized then, my goal is to help you succeed, but it's not to do all the work for you to succeed. My goal is to support you to learn, right? And so that's where um, the whole process of college is actually experienced to teach you how to learn, right? And sometimes it's throwing people in the deep end. Gosh, I know that's how I felt at University of Houston. It was pretty tough there. So um, keep that in mind. But if you need um, anything academically, you need any kind of disability accommodation, anything, um, let me know. And then I will see who it is. If I can't help you, that can help you. Diversity, equity, inclusion. We need everybody with different experiences and different backgrounds to be active in the system because that's how the system changes and that's how the system reflects our population. So I'm um, always here to promote any of this and um, to always respect everybody with um, different backgrounds and stories. And let me see, the rest of this is pretty standard for um, the class, make sure to always use a Sanjak email because I cannot promise 
that if you do it from somewhere else that I will get that email and I will answer you within um, 28, 24 to 48 business hours. And you can find this syllabus under where it says syllabus and calendar. And so that's the syllabus and let me go through your calendar really quick. So this is how I've set it up and, um, oh, it's only one sheet. So I will put the next sheet on there. This will get you through the first four weeks. I don't know why it's just the first one. So as you can see um, for this week, it's intro to course in chapter one, introduction in human anatomy and physiology. And that the laboratory topic is both lab safety and body orientation. So if you look here, tons of extra credit, right? Do everything you need. And so this first discussion is the intro that is going to tell you um, Basically, um, it's going to allow you to tell me a little bit about who you are and you can watch mine and learn a little bit about who I am. So you're gonna post one, make sure to do the right amount of time on there and then you are going to um, reply to three students. And just keep looking for a different background that gives you the right amount of time. Some of them are only 10 to 20 seconds and other ones are a couple minutes. The Connect orientation is going to teach you how to use the Connect or the, the, the book Smartbook 2.0 student overview is going to teach you how to use a smart book for the reading assignments. The science of biology is going to prep you on some of the introductory biology concepts if you need. This succeeding in your online course will teach you concepts on how to be successful in online courses because a lot of people, they're really good in face-to-face, -face, but not as much online. And I hate to tell you from an instructor perspective, um, a lot of students don't have the tools they need to be successful in online classes because you need stuff like focus and time management and all of that, those things that you kind of get forced to have when you visit a face-to-face -face class. Now, I only took a handful of what would be considered back in the day online classes, right? Now I take classes because I just love to learn. I'm a learner, it's one of my traits. I take them all the time if I can. Um, I'm even thinking about maybe going back to school for computer programming and artificial intelligence. So I just love learning. So this will kind of give you an idea of those tools or how to be successful there. And then this virtual lab tutorial is going to teach you how to use the virtual labs. So those are all extra credit that you can get right now this week to work on it. And as you can see, they are due all tomorrow. So you want to get that done. Now for the actual assignments that start your grading, right? The Learn Smart Lab, this is your lab safety assignment. That is also due the 25th so that you can get ready for the lab activities down here. So, but that is for grade, that's your first lab. And then you have the chapter one reading assignment. This is intro to human anatomy and physiology, the chapter one homework and chapter one quiz. Those are all due on the Monday the 29th. So you have the whole weekend to do that. And then you have um, the lab activity, which is going to go over body orientation and that's due the 29th. And as you can see, as you go through this calendar, you'll see that most things are due on um, I, the Monday of the week. Now realize this next week, like if you see week two on week three, it's due on Tuesdays, that's because the college is closed on September 5th for Labor Day. So you'll get it, it's going to be due on the 6th. But just because it's due that day doesn't mean that you don't you can't get all this stuff done early. So my idea would be log in, look at your schedule and say, you know what? I have, I like I'm taking classes on Tuesday, Thursday, or if you're taking all online classes, I would go and make a calendar and say, okay, I am going to log into my A and B class and I'm going to say, I have this time from eight to 11 or 10 50 on Monday and Wednesdays. I'm going to do all my lab or lecture stuff on Monday. I'm going to do all my lab stuff on Wednesday and then I'm going to be able to get done so I can enjoy my weekend. That's kind of what I would do on here. I wouldn't try to sit down though and do it all at one time because it is a lot of work because remember it's supposed to be at minimum 96 hours because you're getting lab and lecture. But this is how it's going to be every time and then it's all going to be this very specific um, and they'll start seeing that you'll see lines um, just to differentiate the weeks. So every assignment is due by 11.59 of the date that's on there. And this kind of tells you what the topics and what chapters will be covered. 
So um, you can get to all of those just to let you know by going in here and this tells you more information. So let me just kind of go through the start here a little bit for this and it gives you here, this is who I am and you get to see a nice um, picture of me. This is the Miller Brewery in Milwaukee. Um, I love beer, I love fermentation. I'm a biochemist just to let you know. And yeah, when I have to read and I have to do stuff, I have gotten, first of all, I have a condition where one eye is nearsighted and one eye is farsighted and I never really realized it. I just had headaches my whole life. But now I've gotten old enough where, and you know, sometimes things are getting a little blurry. So thank you age. So you can find all my contact information as it said here in the faculty profile. So if you go here, you see faculty profile and it's not here, I'm sorry, I will get that done today. I thought it was here, it didn't save. So I will do that so you know, but you can also find it in the syllabus. Um, this tells you what the purpose of the course, and this gives you an idea of what we're gonna be using. Like, um, we have Connect, so this will give you what, if you're having problems with the software requirements you need. Animoto is what we use to make our intro. Um, Zoom and WebEx, if we need to meet for anything. Um, Flipgrid is um, kind of um, a thing that I do sometimes for extra credit that you can go back and it's a discussion um, software. And Respondus is um, essentially sometimes what you use for lockdown browser and webcam. Um, this is a link that explains how technology can be used. These are all the private policy things and accessibility. And so here, this is a six week class. It's anytime, so you decide when you wanna get it done, but that doesn't mean that you decide the due dates of things. Um, we use these grades that I've went through to determine, and this is a letter grade assignment. You should divide your coursework into two days, um, and that will help you with everything that you need. Um, you should be denoting at least three hours to cover lecture and three hours to cover lab. This is six hours. This doesn't include the amount of time that you should use to complete homework or study for exams, and that should be between 12 and 16. And of course, it did it again. So I will add the, the rest of the schedule here momentarily. Again, grading formula and don't expect a curve of response. So generally I respond next business day. Um, if you don't hear anything from me, please let me know. It just means I may not have gotten your email. The system online is weird sometimes. And sometimes what it does is if I send out an email and people respond to it, it stacks it. And sometimes it hides your email and I may not see it. So um, just send it again if you don't hear from me. I'm grading, I try to do it in a timely manner. Um, exams, lecture assignments, lab, and all those have about a one week turnaround um, because I'll go in and I'll make sure that things are kind of um, coming in or being updated or anything else. If you ever see though anything that doesn't look right, please let me know because there are a lot of grades coming in, a lot of students, I may not always see it. Um, quizzes in D2L are auto graded, so you should get that immediately. And sometimes your grades won't update in Blackboard. I said D2L, I meant Blackboard. Won't update in Blackboard until after the due date. So wait till after the due date, and if it hasn't transferred yet, reach out to me and I'll help you. The group project, though, is a little bit more extensive, so that takes me about two weeks to grade. Um, I will always keep your stuff private, don't worry about that. And this kind of gives you an example of what's in every course. And so this gives you a little bit of what's due. And here are the assignments that you can find. So you see the connect orientation, smart book, the prep, succeeding, your first virtual lab. And um, this is that first lab safety. So you can go in here and start completing those. And um, this is the, your syllabus. So, um, yeah, so I will create one that's much shorter than this for a course walkthrough because um, you have all those intro assignments as well. Again, if you need anything, let me know. Good luck. And I'm always here for you. I love teaching. I love students. And I love to be the beginning of an amazing life in whatever, you know, long term goal that you have for a career or even if it's just to come back and learn, right? Sometimes we take for granted the ability to just be able to learn. There are times in the history of our country where based on gender, ethnicity, 
race, all of those things that you did not have the ability to even learn how to read, let alone, and even socioeconomically, right? And in some parts of this world, that's still the case. So always grasp on because just because, you know, we are lucky enough to be in a country that obviously has its problems like anything, but we still have that opportunity to not be ignorant and to have and accumulate and acquire knowledge. So keep that in mind, even when things get stressful, that we have that opportunity here that has not always been allotted us and or isn't allotted us if we live somewhere else. So I hope that just gives you a little bit of motivation. I hope your first week is going well. And thank you for choosing to sign up for Biology 2404 with me, Dr. Heather Brasher, and I look forward to an awesome semester. Bye. And go kooks.